hopefully this is something that will help someone else. As I'm talking throughout the video, just watch the trailer to see what happens. This is something that I had wished for when I was in the process of choosing the travel trailer, choosing my, my tow vehicle. What's going on guys? So I wanted to make this quick video. We are uh, actually on our way to the Cherokee KOA in the uh, Smoky Mountains, or I guess officially it's called the Great Smoky Mountains. And um, it's been a smooth sailing day, but I wanted to make this video to show you what it's like driving in the mountains with a half ton truck pulling a, um, a 32 foot trailer. So starting off, there was no wind, very little. It was like two miles an hour, which is, is lovely. Uh, but as we get closer and as we've gotten closer to the mountains, uh, there's also a cold front coming in. It's supposed to go from sunshiny weather to rain. I haven't seen any rain clouds, but I definitely can tell the weather is shifting because it's extremely windy now compared to what it was. It went from two miles an hour to I think it was reading 12 miles an hour. And there was there's uh, quite a few gusts that keep happening now. So naturally you slow down, uh, you adjust your traveling uh, techniques and you give yourself more time to react. Make sure you're staying within the safe zone. There's a lot of different things you've got to think about. I've said it in a previous video, you know, the first thing to get rid of is your pride. Take your pride out of the way so you can think rationally, so you can think safely and clearly uh, to make sure that you're accounting for all the different aspects that you can and can't control in the road. Um, expect the worst, you know, obviously, hopefully that doesn't happen, but you need to be prepared for it. And you can do this and be safe with it. Another thing to think about as well is you know, there's a level of anxiety that happens when you're towing a trailer in general. Uh, but then as you move to more uh, more advanced terrain, mountainous areas, wind, rain, all of those things can increase that anxiety level. And that's very dangerous if you don't know how to control it um, or if you don't know where your limit is. If you get to that point of anxiety to where you start losing control and start panicking and doing different things, you can really create a dangerous situation. So make sure you know what your limitations are personal. I'm not even talking about the truck. I'm not even talking about your setup. I'm talking about you as the operator of that vehicle. Know what your limitations are when you get to the point of, of anxiety uh, because anxiety makes people do very, very dangerous things. So here's something I want to kind of talk about. If you can see ahead of me, he's pulling away. He's, he's increasing the distance between the two of us, but there's a gentleman who has another half ton and he's pulling probably a 24, 25 foot trailer. And I mean, he kind of blew past me. This is what I mean when I say, you know, watch your pride, take care of your pride. A lot of people will get upset and say, oh, you've got a travel trailer, I've got a travel trailer, you've got a Ram, I've got a Ram, I can keep up with you. And that's craziness. And that's how situations come about. Especially when you're driving in, in elevated terrain, going up and down in windy roads. Why is that a problem? Because there's characteristics that he doesn't have to necessarily contend with that I do. And so, for example, he has a much, much shorter trailer, much lighter trailer. I would even say his truck is probably heavier. This is a key point. His truck is probably heavier than the trailer he's towing. And so because of that, I have to understand there's limitations that I have right now that he doesn't have to contend with. And if I let my pride get in the way and say, man, you know, I could go just as fast as you are, which I can at a much, much less safer rate, you know, boom, there's problems. And it's not fair to the people around us at all. You know, look, people are blowing by me, blowing by me right now. I'm going 65. All right, the speed limit is 70. I'm going 65 in the right lane. Most of the trucks, most of your trailers, they're going that route as well. Some of your trucks like one that's getting ready to pass me. He's probably going, I'm slowing down as well. So I'm at 62, 63. So he's probably going to even 70. Uh, but he also doesn't have a load, he just has his trailer. So there's a lot of different things that you have to take into account. And you know, while I'm doing this, like I did in the last video, you can kind of watch the trailer and see, as I'm talking throughout the video, just watch the trailer to see what happens. You can tell when I get hit with a wind gust. You can tell when I pass an 18 wheeler. Um, it's just about being safe and, and understanding, again, like I said in the previous videos, what you're dealing with. You know, the wind is real, it's, it's moving back there. I've got my brake, uh, my trailer brake set. My gain is set at six. I typically keep it around five. I have it up to six. One, because I'm on mountainous terrains, on the highway, interstate nonetheless. I haven't even hit the roads where they'll be windy and things. But right now, it's, you're, you're dealing with more grades and things. And East Coast grades, right? It's not the West Coast grades. So uh, elevation-wise, I have to say, it's a little bit lower than you would if you're out in the Rockies. But there are, don't, don't be fooled by that. Just because you're not as high elevation-wise, there are some steep grades that you can uh, get yourself into. And so 
the rules don't change. The rules maintain the same. No matter if you're on the East Coast, West Coast, or in the Central parts of America, which is primarily flatlands. So we are going up a nice size grade right here um, on our way to Cherokee, North Carolina. So on this grade, you can see, I mean, it's, it's pretty hefty. Uh, I'm going 51 right now. Ears are popping, all of that good stuff. So this is it, guys. The half ton truck pulling a uh, 2800 BH Grand Design, 32 feet in all, handling it up the mountain. It's not an issue. The wind is blowing, so I feel the tug on the wind. Um, but it's safe. You can see cars are passing me on my left. I'm in the middle lane right now. The speed limit's 55, I'm going 55. I wanted you all to see this part of the video for yourself. I prefer to tell you about my experience while you're seeing me do it. Hopefully this is something that will help someone else. This is something that I had wished for when I was in the process of choosing the travel trailer, choosing my, my tow vehicle. I'm safe, I'm not sweating, I'm not white knuckling. We're at higher elevation. You can see how the rig is moving. Also, um, this is when staying within your rate, your weights, your payload, and all those things, this is where it's really important. This is why I always weigh before we take off on a trip and uh, and make sure your numbers are in place because you're going up, this isn't the hard part, you always wanna make sure that you can stop going down, right? And so the more weight you have, the more energy it's gonna take, the more effort it's gonna take to stop it. However, the good thing about having more weight too is it's easier to control the trailer because it balances out the weight disadvantage that you have with a half ton truck and a 32 foot uh, long trailer. I'm comfortable guys, you know, it's, and it's not about convincing you all of anything. I'm showing you right here, take it or leave it, but it is what it is. Everybody's not gonna be comfortable doing this in a half ton. Again, everybody's not gonna feel that you need a three quarter ton to do this. It goes both ways, it's all about preference. But again, like I said in other videos, it's all about making sure you can be safe, being confident in your abilities, but humble enough to know when something is too much. Humble enough to know when you're out of your realm of safety, meaning the wind is too hard, there's too high, uh, there's too many 18 wheelers, whatever the case may be, that puts you in a place where you know you cannot maintain safety for yourself, for the people in the vehicle and the people around you. What we're doing, what's going on? Right now I'm going 45. Still going up the, uh, the grade. Hope they're all right. Everything's good there. Looking at my numbers, everything is good. Temps are good. Uh, my fuel consumption right now, I am about 8.3 miles per gallon, which going uphill is actually held. It's not going down. So that's pretty cool. Temps are looking good. Vehicle's handling. Now what you'll see as we get ready to come down, now this is where you wanna make sure you're, you're much more strategic in how you are driving. All right, so we're going down a little grade here. This is where you wanna have a properly equipped truck, very important. And of course we're hitting traffic going down, so completely messes up what I'm trying to show you in the video. The one thing you don't wanna do as you go down the hill is ride your brakes, because eventually your brakes will fail, they'll overheat and they'll, they'll get out and the next thing you know you'll be pushing it all the way down to the floor, praying that it stops. You wanna have the tow haul mode. I would not recommend anybody tow a trailer of any type of weight without tow haul, tow haul mode, and most uh, trucks these days will have that. Being in tow haul mode, uh, when I hit the brake, the, the engine automatically engages in the engine brake or the transmission brake. If traffic wasn't in front of us, um, I might even look at locking the gear out. And so on your steering wheel, uh, on most trucks nowadays, they have it somewhere on the steering wheel where you can lock it into a certain gear. Same as what you did back in the day when they didn't have the, the locking of the gears, you just put it in low gear. Same principle. That helps save your brakes and helps you maintain control of the brake. We weigh every time we take off. Numbers are always within the legal limits. When that day changes, the tow vehicle changes. From a performance standpoint, this thing does everything I want it to do as safely as I want it to do it. And I can enjoy it when I'm not towing and doing all the other things in life. Like I mentioned in the last video, I told my boat, I like to hunt. Um, I take my kids to soccer practice. I go to the grocery store, all that. This fits my lifestyle. So that's why um, I'm just so thrilled and pleased with this truck all the way around. I have a Blue Ox Sway Pro. 
uh, weight distribution hitch. Love it, no complaints, big fan of it. Some people love it, some people hate it, just like all other things in life. Okay guys, so I want you to see this before I hit it, hit trap on the last video. We are on a, uh, I just passed a sign that says 7% great. And so now we're headed downhill. Right now I'm at 55, the speed limit is 55, and I'm just coasting. Right now at this point, I haven't applied the brake so the engine brake isn't even, or the transmission brake isn't necessarily kicking in. All right, so now I just hit the brake a little bit, I tap it, I didn't hold it, and now I can hear the transmission, the engine holding it back, right? So we're coming down. Uh, we've been on this for a little bit. I should have started the camera a lot sooner, but right now I'm still not on the gas, I'm not on the brake, and I'm actually decelerating. This is important because right now I'm saving my brakes especially when you're talking about driving in the mountain with a half ton actually i'm going downhill and i have to hit the gas now because it would continue to slow down 32 foot trailer all in from tongue to, to bumper is actually a little heavier than this truck so controlling the weight preventatively is very very important okay this is something you can do i'm comfortable i'm not stressing i just know what's going on typically if i wasn't talking about this you know during a video it would be less a lot less um itemized meaning I wouldn't be giving you the play-by-play -play of what's going through my mind, what am I looking at. So it makes it sound like there's a lot that's happening at once, but it's really not because the advantage I have over what you're seeing through the video is I can feel what's going on through the pedals and the truck. I can feel the gravity. I can feel all that stuff going on. So again, but that takes you being willing to put your pride aside, like I said a million times, being in tune with what you're doing and actually letting the road come to you. Very, very important. The one thing I like about mountain terrain, most mountainous terrains that are really steep, they will at least let you know, hey, you've got a steep grade coming up. Coming up. And like I said, right before I turned on the camera, there was a sign that said 7% grade. So just looking at what you're doing, paying attention to what you're doing, looking at the signs, looking at the terrain, watch the vehicles in front of you as well. A lot of mountain driving can be can, can be made a lot easier if you just pay attention to what the other cars are coming are going through, especially if you see a tractor trailer or even another RV or travel trailer or fifth wheel driving ahead of you. Let them take care of the experience and then you make the decisions and make the different moves you need to stay safe by watching what they just went through. So if you see a big bump coming up and they're 100 yards ahead of you, go ahead and slow it down early. Take some of that pressure off yourself. There's little advantages to that. Watch the roads, watch the curves, all of that good stuff. But um, you can absolutely do it. Would a three quarter ton truck be better? Yeah. For sure, there's no argument there. So for anybody who wants to try to start that whole argument, you might as well keep on going. There's not gonna be an argument about that here. I'm talking to the folks that have half tons that don't want three quarter ton, tons trucks and that are able to stay within payload, stay within their numbers. This is who this is for. Um, you know, I don't want you all to be fooled. If you can't stay within your, your numbers legally, you do need to get a bigger truck or a smaller trailer. But if you can do it legally and you feel comfortable and you feel safe, Guys, look, you can do this. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do this with a half ton truck. You absolutely can, as long as you can meet the other parameters that I just listed. So another thing I want you all to do here is I want you to look back and just watch the trailer. Right now we're in curvy roads. Uh, we just came off of a decline. Now we're going back up into an incline. Pretty steep grade, nice size grade. Um, as you'll see, cars are passing by me. I've got to press the gas a little harder to get going. Same thing you have to do with any truck. No truck is gonna take this type of hill without having to uh, take some more throttle into it. It just is what it is. But watch, you can see it's kind of moving, kind of shifting. The wind's not terrible right now. Thank God for that. Uh, the wind isn't terrible. It's just the momentum of the trailer going into, in and out of curves. There's a difference in what you in, in the driving process when you're driving through the mountains on the highway and then when you're on the back road. Blue Ox is doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm thrilled with the Blue Ox hitch. We just passed the sign that said a 6% grade going down. So now that's what we're doing. We're going down, we're going into a curve that has a max of 50 miles an hour. I'm going 50 right now and I'm already decelerating. Just because with a half ton and a 32 foot trailer, there's nothing wrong with going under the speed limit, guys. Let me say that again. There's nothing wrong with going under the speed limit when you're towing a trailer as long as a 32 foot or even shorter, right? Even if I had a three quarter ton truck or a one ton truck, there's nothing wrong with going lower. Is it gonna be easier to go faster? Yes, there's no debate there. Okay, there's no debate, but it's still nothing wrong with it because the slower you go, the, safe, the safer it is within reason. You know, if it's 50, you don't want to be going 25 on the highway. So we're going down. So now I just tap the brake and just going and just holding this back and slowing this down a little bit, which is good because I don't want to ride my brakes, guys. I don't want to burn my brakes out. And the next time, you know, the next thing you know, I really need it and they're not there. If you don't smell brakes, you're doing good. 
Um, I actually just hit the gas uh, because the engine brake was working so well. This tow haul mode is really, really, really good. Again, you can do it, you can do it safely, but you have to be strategic. You have to understand you are not driving on flat ground. That's very, very important. And because you're not driving on flat ground, it requires you to take certain steps and certain precautions that you typically wouldn't have to take. We clearly made it across the mountain, up and down, all around it, and now we're getting ready to take it back. So just want you all to know that yes, you can absolutely do this with a half ton. You can absolutely take hills and tow through mountains with a 32 foot trailer can do it it's not impossible don't ever let anybody tell you you can't as long as you're doing it legally as long as you're doing it within your payload numbers within all of your axle weights all of the important rating numbers make sure you stay into that guys I'm not encouraging anybody drive um, over their max or illegally but what I am saying is if you can do it with the right strategy uh, with the right techniques it's not impossible it's not even difficult and you can do it pretty comfortably all right thanks so much for watching God bless take care